Welcome to the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation CF Education Day webcast, Genetic Counseling Beyond One in Four. I'm Leslie Hazel, Director of Patient Resources at the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. This webcast is hosted by the Foundation and supported through an unrestricted educational grant from Genentech. We are going to be discussing in this webcast the role of the genetic counselor, how CF is inherited, what different genetic terms mean, how CF mutations are found, and where you can learn about CF genes and their mutations. If you have additional questions about the genetics of cystic fibrosis, I encourage you to talk to your CF care center or find a genetic counselor who is familiar with cystic fibrosis. Joining me are two, genetic, two certified genetic counselors who work at CF centers. Eleanor Langfelder Schwinn is the genetic counselor at Beth Israel Medical Center in New York City. Christina Zaleski is the genetic counselor at the Marshfield Clinics in Marshfield, Wisconsin. Welcome, Eleanor and Christina. So let me start it off. What is a genetic counselor and what's their role on CF care team? Well, genetic counselors are specially trained healthcare professionals. We have training in both genetics, molecular biology, as well as counseling. And our role is really to help patients and their families process the unique impact of genetic information, not only on the patient, but on the entire family. We also serve as a genetic resource for the entire CF team. So we're kind of a natural fit for the multidisciplinary team of CF caregivers at an accredited CF care center. So um, do both parents, and this was a question that actually came in, do both parents have to be carriers in order for their child to have cystic fibrosis? That's a great question, question Leslie. Um, that's a really common question that we get at the beginning because usually when a child is diagnosed with cystic fibrosis, the family has never heard of it before and they wonder where could this have come from. But it's true that both parents do have to be carriers and often as part of the genetic counseling related to this, we start at the beginning and we say, we, we talk to people about, well, in the middle of our cells, mm -hmm. that's where all of our genetic instructions are stored. Um, they come in packages called chromosomes and it's actually the gene that's most important, the CFTR gene. We inherit one copy of that gene from our mother through the egg and one through the father from the sperm. So we all have two copies of that CFTR gene. And if a child inherits two non-working copies, one from each parent who have to be carriers, then that child would have cystic fibrosis. Well, that follows up really good on the next question that came in, and that was, so a couple's first child has CF. What are the odds that their second and subsequent children will have cystic fibrosis? Every time two parents who are both carriers of a cystic fibrosis gene mutation have a child together or conceive a pregnancy, there's a one in four chance for that pregnancy to be affected with cystic fibrosis. There's also a one in four chance that the pregnancy would be neither affected with CF nor a carrier, and a 50% or a two in four chance that the child would be an unaffected healthy carrier of CF just like their parents. So, and in terms of, oh, I'm sorry, in terms of this, the second child, um, the chances are the same. It would be the same one in four. Just like when you see a family with, say, four boys or four girls, the gender of the first child does not have an impact on what the gender of the other children in the family will be. The same thing really goes for cystic fibrosis. The CF status of the first child doesn't influence the CF status of the subsequent children. Um, many of the viewers in high school may have drawn out these inheritance, inheritance patterns as a Punnett square, which we can see in the next slide. So if a parent, one parent is a carrier, will all of the offspring be carriers of the CF gene? No, actually if one parent is a carrier, then their children have a 50-50 chance of being a carrier. It's it's not all of them. It could be all of them, just like you could have four girls in a row or four boys in a row, but it's a 50-50 chance with each pregnancy if one parent is a carrier. I really like that gender example because it makes something complicated more understandable and, and you know, people understand that genetic. That is what we try to do as, genetic, perspective. as well, genetic counselors. And it also gets to the blame um, question where parents often like to blame themselves when their child has an inherited disorder. But just like we don't get to choose if our child is going to be a male or a female, we don't get to choose which egg or which sperm gets passed down. 
So it's something that our body does for us, and we don't we don't have control over that. So that follows up on another question where a parent wanted to know, was there anything they could have done to prevent their child from getting cystic fibrosis? Absolutely not. There's nothing that a parent could do to prevent it. Um, just like we don't get to pick what color eyes we're going to have or how tall we're going to be um, or how smart we're going to be, we don't get to choose um, our genes and how they're passed down. So is there a difference um, with different mutations? Does that influence whether how someone inherits? Does that have any influence? There are over 1,800 different mutations that have been identified in the CF gene. And as long as a person inherits two disease-causing mutations, they will have CF, whether they're the same two mutations or two different ones. So someone wanted to know, what exactly does the CF gene do? Well, if we go to the, the picture of the cells, and we can see on the outside of each cell is, is a membrane, which works like a boundary or a fence. And the CFTR gene makes a protein also called CFTR, which functions like a gate to let salt cross the fence. And when salt is moving nicely, uh, water as well, and the, the fluid on the lining of our cells and our lungs is nice and thin, and the bacteria that's there can be cleared easily. So people who either do not have cystic fibrosis because they are neither a carrier nor affected, or they're a carrier, have the ability to make these working gates. And the reason they have that ability is because inside of our cells, as Christina mentioned, we have genetic information, which works like an instruction manual for how to uh, assemble and install the gates, the door, the hinges, the handles. And what a mutation is in the gene is a typo in that instruction manual. So people who are CF carriers have one copy of that instruction manual that has a typo in it and one that's working well enough to ensure that they make enough gates to stay healthy. If we look at the next picture, which is uh, in cystic fibrosis, people who have CF, neither copy of their instruction manual is typo-free. So there is either an omission or a diagram missing or a word change that has affected how those gates are being made and salt is not moving properly. So if parents have two different mutations, what does that mean for their child with cystic fibrosis? Well, if they're two different disease-causing mutations, then the child would be expected to have cystic fibrosis. Um, we, there are over 1,800 mutations, like Eleanor said, and, and they, do, they don't have to be the same ones. As long as there's two that are disease-causing, that would result in CF. So we get a lot of questions, and you mentioned um, a few terms that I'd like some clarification. So you mentioned disease-causing mutation, but you also, we get a lot of questions about a variant for CF, for polymorphism. What are those terms, please? Sure. So disease-causing mutation is actually a typo in the instruction manual that's serious enough to affect either how that gate is made, if it's made at all, or maybe how it moves to the outside fence of the cell. A polymorphism is more like a normal difference in maybe the writing style of the gene. If you think about how Americans spell the word color, C-O-L-O-R, versus how Canadians spell it with a U in there, C-O-L-O-U-R, um, they're both normal, they're both fine, they're both working. Nobody's gonna get confused by reading the, letter, the word. Um, so a polymorphism is generally considered more of a benign, just a, a change in the style of the instruction manual. A variant is when we're not really sure, is it disease causing or is it a normal variation? So what about a term that I hear sometimes is a novel variant? What's that mean? So a novel variant would be something that is found for the first time, novel meaning new. So it would be a change in the gene that's never been seen before, and it really hasn't been studied well enough to know whether it is a disease-causing mutation or if it's benign. So where can uh, people who have CF or families um, go to learn more about a CF mutation? Well, I think the CF Center is the first place to start to talk to their CF caregivers, let them know that they're interested in finding out more about this. They can then either work with the genetic counselor that's part of their CF team or go to www.nsgc.org to find a genetic counselor near them. And what's, uh, what's NSC, nsgc.org? NSGC.org, um, the National Society of Genetic Counselors, is the professional association of genetic counselors. Oh, that's good. 
So That's you, a good resource. You can actually click on the button, find a genetic counselor, and then put in your zip code, and you'll find the closest genetic counselor to you. Um, when you find that person, a good first question to ask is, well, what is your, do, are you experienced in CF? Are you well-versed? Because some genetic counselors specialize in only cancer genetics or only um, OB or obstetrical complications. So it's it's important question to ask. And if they're not the right person, I'm sure they'll be able to direct you to the closest person. There's only about a little over 2,000 of us in the country. Wow, that's not very many. Um, a question that came in, will two people, um, in the same family have the same CF because of genetics? And that's a great question. We follow many siblings um, with CF and some of them, the way the CF affects them is very similar from sibling to sibling and others can be quite different. Um, for example, there's a, a, an intestinal blockage called meconium ileus that occurs in about 15% of CF patients and we see differences in whether or not there's meconium ileus in two siblings with CF. So there's a lot more than just those two mutations that will impact how severe or mild a person's disease is, their, their care, their, um, their exercise, their diet. And then siblings, while they share the same two CF mutations and a whole, about half of the other genes in common just by virtue of having the same two parents will also have 50% of their genes different as well. And we know that other genes of, of those 30,000 genes that Christy mentioned, the other 29,999 will play a big role as well in, in their health and well-being. So is it possible to, to, to detect all CF mutations in a child? You know, is there a test that can be done at clinic and is it expensive? Well, nowadays, in the era of newborn screening, many children find out about their mutations just by the virtue of having a newborn screen done because many states do do DNA testing. Um, again, about 90% of patients have at least one Delta F508. Um, however, sometimes um, later in life, like when a, a person with CF is interested in a research, that would be a time where maybe they would be tested. Um, sometimes it's um, as part of a diagnostic workup in childhood, if, if their newborn screen didn't have DNA testing or if that DNA testing didn't find the two mutations. Um, again, there's over 1,800 of them. Mm -hmm. So depending on whether or not they can get away with finding the mutations on a small panel versus having to have extensive gene sequencing really um, is individual and case by case. And there is a big difference in cost. The basic panel of CF mutations, which will detect um, about, well, 90% of, mm -hmm. of patients with CF will have at least one copy of the most common mutation, Delta F508. So a panel of mutations that includes Delta F508 and about 22 others costs a few hundred dollars, about three to four hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. If they have to go through the full gene sequencing, that can be several thousand dollars. So generally people start with the first panel. Um, the good news is, is that many insurance companies and state plans will cover genetic testing for, di for diagnostic purposes. That's good to know, and I know with all the research going on, knowing people want to know what their mutation is, because a lot of research is based on what mutation people have. So if a person with CF have, has children, what are the chances that they will have children with cystic fibrosis? Um, well, that's a great question, and that, the answer depends on whether or not their partner is a carrier or not. If a person with cystic fibrosis, and in this slide we represent the mother being affected, but it could really be the mother or the father, um, if they had a, a child with somebody who is not a carrier, then all of their children would inherit a disease-causing mutation from the affected parent, but the other parent would be passing down a working copy of that gene. So all of their children would be carriers, but not expected to actually be affected with CF. If that other partner is a carrier, then it's a 50-50 chance on whether or not their children would be affected versus be just a carrier. That's um, a great um, description of what's going on. So a viewer wanted to know if we are finding more non-Caucasian people with CF, um, someone mentioned Pakistani or Indian or Hispanic or Asians. Are those numbers going up? Because I know CF is known as mainly in Caucasians. Well, with newborn screening, we are finding patients from all ethnic groups. We know that, that CF affects people from 
all ethnic groups, all racial backgrounds. Um, and with newborn screening, we're finding more and more of those patients earlier. Um, so let's go to the last question. And, you know, we've talked about a lot. What is the role of the genetic counselor through the lifespan of somebody with CF? Well, the role can change as that child changes. Um, in the beginning, when a t baby is diagnosed, oftentimes our role is helping to explain the diagnosis, helping the family to sort th through some of the stats or statistics that they're trying to make sense of when they're um, reading articles or, or Googling on the internet, um, kind of putting it into context for the family. We can help um, siblings help understand what does cystic fibrosis need mean to them? Why does their sister or brother have to go see a accredited CF team so often? Um, as that child grows, they may have questions about their condition. They may have science projects that they need help on and need a person to help give them resources for. Um, now we get a lot of questions from adults who are interested in or children who are interested in research trials and they need to know what their genes are, what their mutations are, in order to know whether or not they're eligible. So that's another role, along with a lot of the reproductive questions about can we have a family, and now the answer to that is yes, which is different than it was years ago, um, but what are the different ways and, and are there ways to um, try to reduce the chances of having a child, affect a child with CF, is there carrier testing available? Mm -hmm. So helping families sort through some of those difficult questions and, and thoughts behind it. So, go ahead. Oh, no, I just wanted to add one other thing. A lot of the questions that we get from parents involve the, um, the features of CF that go along with certain mutations. Mm -hmm. They want information. What does this mean? What, does these, what do these mutations mean? I think we talked about you know, siblings with CF can be very similar or very different. In the same way, people with different mutations can also be very similar or very different. And We'd like families to know as they're looking for information about their children's genotype to not look at another child from another family who has the same genotype and, and assume that their child's experience or their experience will be exactly the same because we're still learning so much about these mutations and what they mean. And the CF Foundation's been developing a, a database with Johns Hopkins to try and give families access to more of that information. Well, thank you, Eleanor and Christina. And to add to that, the, you can watch the webcast about the CFTR2 website on the Foundation's website. This concludes the CF Foundation's Education Day, CF Genetic Counselor, Beyond One in Four. I would like to thank you for watching, Eleanor and Christina for answering the questions, um, Rick Vast and the technical crew, Melissa Chin, the CF Foundation for hosting, and Genentech for their unrestricted educational grant. Thank you.